First Samuel 28 And it came to pass in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for warfare to fight with Israel. There comes the enemy again, the Philistines. You know, Israel got rid of them in the book of Joshua and Judges. And Achish said unto David, Now remember, David's on the Philistine side. He's with the king of the Philistines. He's joined himself to the Philistine army. Know thou assuredly, first time that word shows up, and it shows up with David, <laughs> that thou shalt go out with me to battle, thou and thy men, the 600 men, against who? Israel. Come with me with the Philistines and let's go against the Israelites. And David said to Achish, Surely thou shalt know what thy servants can do. And we read that in chapter 27. He went and killed a bunch of people and lied about it. And he said to David, Therefore will I make the keeper of my head forever. I'm going to make you in charge of the military forces. I'm going to give you a position. Forever. Well, that forever is hold to David by God. Under Jesus Christ. The throne given to Jesus Christ. Now a little recap. Samuel was dead. And all Israel lamented him. And buried him in Remeth. Even in his own city. And Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits. And wizards. Out of the land of Israel. Okay. So we're, we're, we got to get the fact is that Samuel's died. That, that's a little footnote. It's going to come back. Saul has made a law throughout the land. No familiar spirits, no seances, no crystal balls, no tarot cards, no wizards, no witches, no nothing. It doesn't say why, but he makes that law. And the Philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched in Shinem. And Saul gathered all Israel together and they pitched in Gilboa. Gilboa. And when Saul saw, there's that Saul saw, the host of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart greatly trembled. That has been the, the way of Saul and his army all through his kingdom and his kingship. They're afraid. They're trembling. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim. Nor by prophets. Now that Urim, let's go back to chapter 23, verse 6, and I'll show you why it's not. And we discuss, we discussed this when we did 23, verse 6. And when we ran back to Exodus 28, but 23, 6. And it came to pass when Abihar, the son of Ahimelech, fled to David at Keilah, that he came down with the ephah in his hand. The reason why the Urim is no use to Saul. Probably with David and the priests. Remember, Saul killed all the priests and those that were alive came to David. Now, if David still has those priests and nothing is said, that Urim, that breastplate, that Urim, I mean, the ephod, is with David. Now, if he sends them back and they pull out the, the ephod and the breastplate and Saul is able to go up to him and say, God, what, what do I do? Where David did that, and God answered David, Saul's not getting nothing. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that has a familiar spirit. I thought it was against the law. You just made it a law. That I may go to her and inquire of her. Breaks his own law. And his servant said unto him, Behold, there is a woman that has a familiar spirit at Endor. Now let's just look real quick. Leviticus 19.31 We did not need a law by Saul. We have the law of God. Leviticus 19.31 So it looks like Saul not only has intervened in the priest's office, but now he's trying to make his own laws above the laws of God. 
Leviticus 1931. Here's what God said. Without saw, regard not them that have sp familiar spirit, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. And another reference that you want to write down, we won't go to Deuteronomy 18.10. The law specifically says that what Saul is doing now, but Saul made a law. He didn't need to make that law. It was already in the law. So you see, Saul has elevated himself above the priest and above God. See, it's not official until I do it. Make it. And Saul disguised, that's the first time that word shows up. Now you're going to start having me see fun. And Saul disguised himself. He put a costume on. He changed his garments. I mean, maybe he's going to look like John the Baptist. Maybe he's going to look like Jesus. Maybe he's going to dress like Paul the Apostle. Maybe he's going to make himself like Joseph. I mean, maybe he's doing it for a Sunday school class. Maybe he's doing it for vacation Bible. Maybe he's going out in December, th I mean, uh, October 31st. Saul disguised himself. So he don't look like Saul. That's exactly what Rebecca did with Jacob going to his father to take uh, the blessing off Esau. Put on other raiment. There's a costume. It's not what he wears. And he went and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night. So when do trick-or-treaters go out? They go out at night. See, everything comes out of the Bible. Stop 5,000 trick-or-treaters on October 31st. Just stop them and ask the adults that are with the, with the kid. Hey, why are you doing it? Why don't you do it today? Because the Bible says by night. And he said, I pray thee. By the way, they call this woman the witch of indoor. You ever watch Bewitch? Remember what the mother-in-law's name was? Endora? E-N-D-O-R-A? Isn't that interesting? A little cute little tap of the, the, the witch. Out of the Bible. By night. And he said, I pray thee, divine unto me, the familiar spirit. I right, get the crystal ball out, get the tea, whatever how this woman does it. And it goes on today. And you can go to someone's tent, you can go to the flea market, you can go to someone's storefront property, you can go have them come to your house. This happens in America in 2018, happens all over the world. I want you to bring Uncle Fred because we don't know where he put the will. We uh, call up Aunt Ethel because we don't know where she put the money. Oh, I've got to see Charles one more time. And God said not to. Yeah, not to be in the realm of magic. And this is magic. Wizardry. Familiar spirit. You know, familiar spirit, what is that? See the word family in that? To be familiarized with? Someone you know. Familiar spirit and bring him up. Whom I shall name unto thee. And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest what Saul has done. Made the law. How he has cut off those that have familiar spirits. So not only did he make a law, but he got rid of them. And the wizards. Out of the land. He drove them out. Wherefore then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die? You know what she's thinking right now? That these three men saw these two? Thinks they're the vice squad. She thinks she's, been, she's being interrogated by the police. They come to her house. And they want to catch her. And put her in jail. It's illegal. She fears for her life. I'm in trouble. Trying to entrap me. Again. Out of the King James Bible. Vice squad police departments. Do go into these people. Who are frauds. And they do get arrested. It's illegal. 
And Saul swear to her, by the Lord. I mean, the Lord is rejected. The Lord he's not listening to. The Lord he has been disobedient to. Saying, as the Lord liveth, there is an oath of God. That's the highest oath that you ever can do. That's the oath that God said. By me, God said, Hebrews. There shall no punishment happen. First time that word shows up. To thee for this thing. Now there's only one person. In all the land of Israel. That can make that statement. And that person is in the disguise. Talking to the woman. Who is about to do the crime. No one else could tell her that. Except the one that made the rule. Then said the woman, Who shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up Samuel. Let's just see why we're told. Samuel's died. He wants the dead Samuel brought up. You say impossible. And when the woman saw Samuel, how about that? And when you talk, Two missionaries on the other side of the world. And when they show you. And sometimes they bring their wooden idols. And their stone idols. And the black magic. Sometimes some of that stuff is real. Sometimes it's imitated by Satan. And the fact is. Here's a man involved in a crime. Who's the leader of Israel. Who's against God. He says I want you to bring up Samuel. And Samuel shows up. Now what, what is the danger of that? The next time you get trouble in your life, you're going to say, well, you know, instead of God, I'll go to the tarot cards because they worked last time. I'll go to the Ouija board because it answered completely. And you put your reliance and you put your de uh, dependence upon the gods and you move away from God. And that's what God doesn't want. God does not want you in the realm of magic. It's wicked. It's vile. It's something that God does not use. She cried with a loud voice. And the woman spake to Saul saying, Why hast thou deceived me? Halloween trick. Trick or treat. The woman was tricked. And Saul got the tree. Samuel showed up. For thou art Saul. How on earth did she know that? Samuel has not spoken yet. Now either this woman. She is a complete fraud. And the fact is that Samuel did show up as surprised and say, you've got to be Saul. Or the gods that she's working with are terrified with her. To know that they've spoken to her. Thou art Saul. Somebody told her. And the king said unto her, be not afraid. And what sawest thou? The womb and the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods. Uh oh. Ascending out of the earth. Now let's take a trip to Genesis 28 12. I'm not saying this is Genesis 28 12, but put a big question mark, please, on this reference. Genesis 28 12. I have a sticking. Put a big question mark. And he dreamed. That didn't work for Saul. And behold a ladder set up. On the earth. And the top of it reached to heaven. And behold the angels of God. Ascending and descending on it. And he calls that place Bethel. The house of God. But there are also. Not only angels of God, but they're angels of the devil. 
Satan told Eve, you should be as gods, knowing good and evil. Jesus said, the, the Psalms say, you shall be as gods, but you'll die like men. In this realm of this seance or whatever she does it, there are gods, there are angels, there are all kinds of things. New age is going on right now. The whole realm of, of I was going to say Hollywood, of, of Halloween. Are there not angels? Are there not witches? Are there not wizards dressed up? Are they not the focus of our Halloween movies and stuff like that? And, and terror movies? Saul has rushed into the realm of the heavenly and the helly. Ascending out of the earth. That is your, uh, oh boy, I can't think of the name of it now. Here are zombies. Let's look at Job chapter 1. And this goes with also with Job chapter 2, but Job chapter 1, God and devil are having a little conversation. In Job 1 7, imagine God and Satan having a conversation. And yet Jesus and, and the devil had a conversation in Matthew 4. Job 1 7, the Lord said unto Satan. Now you wouldn't even think that God would give Satan the time. Whence cometh thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Uh oh. What's going on here in this woman's house? Isn't there costumes with the devil? Nice, sexy costume for women to, to dress up like the devil, a little tail and the pitchforks and all that. And Samuel's called up. But where did your reliance go? Well, you know, see what the thing is? You know, we'll do trunk or tree. It's still Satan. The people who worship Satan acknowledge, I keep saying December, October 31st as Satan's birthday, as Satan's day. And they will do go, go in the graveyards and they, they have killed people for their blood. Virgins. It happens. I can tell you right now, and I know the place, and I'm not going to tell you anything else, but Montville, Connecticut. Satanic orders goes on there. I know it. And he said unto her, What form is he of? And he said, An old man cometh up. And he is covered with a mantle. That's kind of coat, cloth. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel. So Saul can't see this. He's inquiring the woman, saying, what do you see? What's going on? And he stooped his face to the ground and bowed himself. Now, if he can see Samuel now, he is bowing himself down before the dead. He is now worshiping the dead man. That's Halloween, my friend. And Samuel said to Saul, so he bows down before the dead man, and the dead man's going to speak. Why hast thou disquiet, that's the first time that shows, me? I was quiet. I was at peace. I was resting in peace. Why on earth did you bring me up? Now, God is not in this, and look at what she has done through Satan. She has brought Samuel, at least his spirit or his soul, up from the grave. It has happened according to the Bible, 1 Samuel 28. And there are people who go to events like this, and it will happen. This one's real. I believe but there are other times that Satan comes in and fools you. He's transformed into an, into an angel of light. It, aren't his ministers transformed as ministers of righteousness? You are in the realm of, of wickedness. To bring me up. Bring me up, up, up. You're down in the heart of the earth we're going to look at in a moment. He's not in hell. And, Samuel, and Saul answered, I am sore distressed. For the Philistines make war against me. 
and God is departed from me. He knows and answereth, that's the first time that word shows up, me no more. Neither by prophets nor by dreams. Forgot the Urim. Don't even mention the priest. Why not mention the priest? Because they're down there with Samuel right now, the ones that are right with God. And how'd you, how'd you guys get down here? Oh, yeah. And it's departed from thee. In, oh, wait a minute. Where am I? Prophets and dreams. Therefore I have called thee, that thou mayest make known unto me what I shall do. Then Samuel, then says Samuel, Wherefore, then thou, dost thou ask of me, seeing the Lord is departed from thee, and is become thy enemy? Ooh. That's not it. And the Lord has done to him as he, as he spake by me. For the Lord has rent the kingdom of thy hand, has given it to thy neighbor, even David. Oh, that's not what Saul wanted to hear. Saul, Jonathan, everybody knows that David is next in line. And Saul comes like, maybe, you know, God's going to, no. Nope. And Samuel tells him, listen, your kingdom's done. God has departed from you. Now watch this. This is interesting. Because thou obeyest not the voice of the Lord, nor executest, O obeys is the first time that word shows up. And that's also found in Jeremiah twenty two twenty one, 21. Two places. That's it. Obey it. And executed is, is that's, that's the only place that shows up. And that sis, S-T, that just makes it present tense. And yet that was past. And Samuel brings it present. Because thou obeyest not the voice of the Lord, nor execute his fierce wrath upon him, eliminate. Did you just see what happened there with Samuel? Samuel has memory, doesn't he? He is dead and in Abraham's bosom, and yet he remembers, hey, you didn't do it in, what you were supposed to do in eliminate. Isn't that interesting? Therefore has the Lord done this thing unto thee this day. I'm not answering, I'm not talking to you. I have nothing to do with you no more. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines. You're going to lose. That's not what he wanted to hear. And tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me. Dead. Dead. Now, Jonathan, I believe, goes off in Abraham's bosom. But with me, Saul is definitely not going to, to paradise. No way. So let's look at Luke 16. Let's see with, with me. Luke 16. And it's something interesting. Because Luke 16 also matches. Luke 16, we'll start right at verse 19. There was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and fared, only place that shows up, sumptuously every day. This guy was rich beyond just doing great. There was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of swords, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sword. And it came to pass that the beggar died, who was carried by angels in Abraham's bosom. That's where the Old Testament saints go. They didn't go to heaven. Christ has not finished the gospel. Christ hasn't even begun the gospel. This is where Samuel is right now. Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell... He lifted up his eyes, mean torment, seeing Abraham afar off. Here is hell. Those who do not obey the word of God, the voice of God, saw. Here is hell. Here is paradise. Abraham's for those that do obey 
God, Samuel. I'm not, I'm not doing the story of the rich man and Lazarus, doing the Abraham's bosom and hell, Samuel and Saul. Now what? His eyes lifted up in, uh, in hell, he lifted up his eyes. You still got your eyes. Being tormented and seeing Abraham for us. So, to be with me tomorrow, thou and the son. Now, I don't know. I think Jonathan's right. I don't know about the other sons. We're all going to be together in the heart of the earth. Jesus said as, as Jonah was three days and three nights in, in the fish's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And a man in hell can look over and see. They can see that Jesus is God. That's what they can see. They can see the people over in Abraham's bosom. Now, Samuel told us that he was at rest. It's a possibility, the fact is, those that are in Abraham's bosom are resting asleep well resting in peace those that are in hell are able to see and he cried and said father abraham have mercy on me and send lazarus they made send who you mean to tell me that rich man in hell knew exactly who lazarus was he remembered lazarus now let's look at with me Verse 26, Abraham speaking. And beside all this between us and you, there's a great gulf fixed. So that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from then. So here we are. We're in the center of the earth. So you will be here pretty soon. Now you're not going to be with me. You're not coming to Abraham, but you're going to hell, but you are. We're all in one big thing, and the only thing that's separating it is a big gulf. Now, what about the memory? Oh. Verse 28. The rich man. I have five brethren that may testify unto them. He remembers his brother. You got a memory somehow, some way. According to the Bible. And when he said, now, well, back to uh, 1 Samuel 29, I got fooled. 29, 19, thy son be with me. Man, I thought for a moment there that Saul's going to paradise. But years of studying and years of, you know, searching the scriptures out, they're going to the same place inside the heart of the earth. Now, Saul, who God's against him, will not definitely, for sure, not going to go in Abraham's book. He's going to hell. But he says, thy sons would tell me that some of his sons may be right with God. And the Lord also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the Philistine. So, Saul, why did you bring me up? Why did you disquiet me? God's against you. You lost your kingdom. Tomorrow you're going to die, and your sons, and you're going to be down here in the heart of the earth. <laughs> That's not what he wanted to hear. And Saul fell straightway all along the earth. I mean, he fell down flat. That's it. As water that runs out, there he is. And was sore afraid because of the words of Samuel. And there was no strength in him. For he had eaten no bread all the day, nor all the night. He's, gonna, he's reaping what he's sowing. Chapter 14, verse 24. <clears throat> Chapter 14, verse 24. God's, be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. 14, 24. Watch this. And then Israel were distressed that day, for Saul had adjured the people, saying, Cursed be the men, the man that eateth any food until evening. And then we know the story, they're all weak. God didn't forget that. 
So Saul got a trick instead of a treat. And the woman came to Saul and saw that he was sore troubled. And said unto him, Behold, thy, man, thy handmaid has obeyed thy voice. And I have put myself in my, in my hand and have hearkened unto thy words which thou hast spake to She's talking to the king of Israel. And the guy is just laid out on the ground. Despair, troubled, angered. Is that what reminds you what David was? Be not deceived. God is not marked. What so a man so is. What you've done to David, I guarantee. I guarantee all the time that David's been on the run. All those feelings in the wilderness and caves and this despair, I guarantee it's all now come upon Saul. He wanted a good thing. He was not expecting what he just heard. Now this woman comes up to him and says, you know what? I was supposed to die, king. I put my life in the hand, king. Now therefore I pray thee, hearken thou and also unto the voice of thy handmaid. And let me set a morsel of bread before thee. And eat thou and eat that thou mayest have strength when thou goest on thy way. Get out of here, king. Get out of here. If I get out of here, you know what's gonna happen tomorrow? <laughs> I'm dying in battle. You know how Saul dies? He commits suicide. But he refused and said, I will not eat. But his servants together with the woman, compelled, first time that word shows up, compelled him. And he hearkened unto their voice. She arose from the earth. She's on the ground with him. And sat upon the bed. He's there's a bed there, there's a chair, there's a couch. Both her and him are on the ground in the dirt. She gets up. And the woman had a fat calf in the house. Again, that's not, it was in the bedroom with them. It was to be, it's the whole property, it's a fence line. And like Jacob, when he's, when the first thing that comes out of my house. Man, he was expecting a chicken, a goat, or a cow or something to come walking out. He inspected his daughter. She hasted and killed it. And took flour and kneaded. That's the first time that word shows up. Kneaded. That was a wonder. Kneaded it. And did bake unleavened bread thereof. <laughs> Before he dies, she gives him the proper bread, unleavened. And she brought it before Saul. And before his servants, and they did eat, and they rose up and went away that night. First Chronicles ten thirteen. First Chronicles ten thirteen. To finish up what we just read now, First Chronicles ten thirteen. Thou shalt be with me tomorrow. First Chronicles 10, 13. This is God speaking. So Saul died for his transgression. He died in his transgression. Which he committed against the Lord. He sinned against the Lord. Even against the word of the Lord. Even the word of the Lord. Which he kept not. And also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it. I guarantee he went to hell for in his sins rebelling against God rebelling against the word oh yeah by the way for seeing that witch <laughs> and you're gonna think that God's gonna approve of trick-or-treat trunk or treat or Christian magic in the church if he does he will have to apologize to Saul and that woman after it says, against the word of God, against God, transgression, and for seeking that one with the familiar spirit. 
And I don't think God's going to apologize for a man's sin. So when Saul, when Samuel says, with me this today, tomorrow, in the heart of the earth, in the heart of the earth, there are three places, a gulf, hell, and Abraham's bosom. 